I'm really glad to be doing this uh, workshop here. And uh, thank you, appreciate it. And glad to be down here in Florida also. Man, it feels good out here. Um, well, you know, this workshop, I uh, want to make sure everyone knows, uh, I'm going to be talking about basically anything you guys want to be talking about as far as roots instruments, homemade instruments, slide guitar, blues guitar, guitar in general, how to build, how to play, Anything, any questions you might have, um, you know, and I really uh, want to welcome everyone to raise your hand or, you know, call a question out if you have one, uh, because, you know, this is a great opportunity to really start a conversation about these instruments, and uh, so be thinking about some questions. I'm just going to play a little tune on this three-string shovel guitar right here, and then I'll probably tell you a little bit about that, but let's just, uh, let's make this nice and interactive. Feel free to raise your hand. Feel free to ask any questions you might have. My uncle is Roy Clark. I was raised by him, and he played a shovel a lot of times. I'm very thankful that you're keeping this tradition on. Well, thanks a lot, brother. I appreciate that, man. I am Andy East, and, and Roy Clark Roy is my Clark. uncle. Awesome. All well, right. you know, that brings up I've a good point, too, which is that... Uh, <laughs> well, I just drove down from Nashville the other day, and I, I love the uh, history out there. And, and, you know, talking, too, about the fact that, you know, people have been building instruments out of shovels, out of cigar box guitars, out of, uh, we've got some bedpans, some canjos, uh, all kinds of different items. And, you know, one of the things I love about the tradition of doing this, the tradition of both building and playing instruments like this, is that um, it taps you into those roots traditions where I, I think not only a lot of the blues, a lot of the American musical traditions came from, but also, you know, you think about it, and these were some of the first instruments, not shovel guitars, but, um, you know, homemade instruments were the first instruments ever made. You know, when, when you want to make music and you look around at whatever's around, you want to express yourself musically, you have to get creative, and when you build an instrument, and let's say it's a, sh a shovel guitar like this one with three strings and no frets, you have to be creative about how to play it. 
And so, you know, what starts off as a challenge with any instrument ends up developing into a style, and a style develops into a genre, and, you know, genres are what we think of as music nowadays, and so I love thinking about that when I look around at all these different instruments that people are bringing out today and taking home today, and I just love that that tradition is nice and strong. And I want to thank the organizers, too, of this festival for making this kind of thing happen and bringing people together uh, to celebrate this kind of work. And you know, um, playing a, playing a three-string like this, there's lots of different ways to approach it. And uh, like I talked about you know, a second ago, when you think of uh, it as a challenge, it seems difficult. But when you think of some of the things that are easier about playing a three-string or a shovel guitar, then it starts opening up new territory for creating some interesting music. Now, for example, a six-string guitar, when I first started playing six-string, I just fell in love with it. All I did was practice, you know, I practiced chords, I practiced scales, I practiced learning songs. And, um, you know, in a way, I kind of wish that I would have picked up an instrument like this as my first guitar because I would have thought, you know, about musically, uh, uh, music in a different way. I think it, it kind of makes you listen a little harder. When you play with a slide, you have to have a little more, uh, call it hand ear coordination. You know, uh, you have to really listen almost like you're singing. And uh, this is an open G tuning, um, so it's G, D, G. And I think one of the best ways when you pick up an instrument like this to start is just play those bottom two strings open and then just almost sing on that top string. You don't even have to look at it, really. And so, you know, you listen to a lot of that old blues, like Blind Willie Johnson, you know, uh, Mississippi Fred McDowell. Especially a lot of those old blind slide players, you know, they weren't looking at what they were doing. They were singing on those strings and they were doing it with a slide. And I think a reason, a uh, big reason for that is because they learned on instruments like these that didn't have frets. So even when they get conventional six string guitars to record with, they're still playing roots instruments to a, to a degree. I mean, you think about who started out on the one-string diddly bow or the cigar box guitar, and it's people like Lightning Hopkins, uh, Elmore James, Blind Willie Johnson, B.B. King, Buddy Guy, Jimi Hendrix uh, started out on one-string ukulele, you know. And so um, I think that early challenge ends up making them, when they get that six-string, it's, it's like a symphony, you know. It's not just one instrument. <laughs> And when you start out on three strings as opposed to six strings, it's a lot easier to learn slide. You know, you look at the advantages of an instrument like a shovel or a fretless uh, three string, like what Charlie was building here a second ago. The action's a lot higher off of the fretboard, so you're not as likely to hit the frets with the slide when you first put it on. There's less strings, so you don't have to mute as many strings. Usually you don't play all six strings at the same time. It's actually very rare that you really play all six strings at the same time, especially on slide. Not to mention, you know, a fretted guitar. So you can play a lot of the same music, you know, a lot of the same songs. You just have to learn it by ear. You have to learn it by learning the instrument, by learning the song, by learning the music in a different way. something like that would be a lot more difficult to play on a six string because when I go from that chord I'd have to mute the strings I didn't want to play I'd have to not either not pluck them 
or I'd have to mute them. And when I put that slide against all of the strings, I'm only hitting three mm -hmm. instead of six. So, you know, there's a lot yeah. less noise going on on the fretboard. And when I switch to that single string, notice how my slide's hardly even facing those other strings, you know? You can't really do that on a fretted instrument. You can do it really easily on a shovel. And that's how I play the shovel a lot of times, is I'm actually pushing up with the slide as opposed to down towards where the frets would be. The strings are spaced farther apart. So again, a lot of times, you know, when people, especially when they're wanting to learn blues music and slide guitar, I always recommend, you know, we'll get an instrument like a three string guitar first, because that'll really give you some confidence and you'll be able to actually play something musical a lot quicker than on a six string from my experience. That's D, G, D? Um, asking about the tuning, again, the, the tuning on this instrument right here is open G tuning. And that's G, down low, and then D, and then G. And this is using the, um, the A, D, and G string from a standard six string guitar pack. And that's generally how I think about tunings, um, on whether it's six string, uh, three string, four string, whatever it is. I'll usually think about, you know, I came from a six string guitar background, so you've got your low E, you know, an A, D, G, B, E. And you can tune that to, you know, all kinds of alternate tunings, all kinds of open tunings, open E, open G, open A, open D. And so um, when you're playing with a three or four string, I like to think of those as you know, fragments of those traditional open tunings. So with the open G, that's the same thing that you would tune uh, an open G six string guitar to if you were playing, but it's only the A, D, and G string tuned to G, D, G. And I know that's like, I just said the whole alphabet like four times explaining that. <laughs> and, um, it, you know, it's always, you know, complicated at first when you don't know the tunings. But if you, if you, you know, do a little research, and um, I try to put a lot of this information on my website, rootsmusicschool.com. And um, so if you go to rootsmusicschool.com, you can find a lot of tuning charts for three strings and four strings. Also transposing on the different strings. Let's say you want to play an open C or open B flat. I give you the right strings to put on for something like that on a three string or four string guitar. And... Um, but yeah, uh, thank you for asking that question too. You had another four, one. When you had the four string, what what note is that? So um, in this open G tuning, if I was going to add a fourth string, generally I'd add one higher, and I would add uh, the B string. So again, th then it would be like the middle four strings from a six string guitar pack. I'd have A, D, G, B. But you're dropping out. But I would drop down that A to a G, so it would be G, D, G, B. Exactly, and that B would be this note and it would make it a major chord as opposed to a minor chord which sounds a little more sad and so um, you know a lot of times with blues you're tuning to a major chord but you're playing minor chords too so it's kind of like happy and sad at the same time which is kind of what blues music sounds like you know kind of happy and sad at the same time uh, but you know what's good about this open G on a three string is it's not major or minor. It's a very ambiguous tonality. It's not actually a chord. Like by definition, a chord is at least three notes. Um, so this would be called a chord fragment or a power chord. You know, which a lot of rock music is just, you know, two notes in a power chord formation like that. And uh, I mean, you can rule the world with three notes or two notes as long as you're doing it right and you're doing it loud enough. But um. But yeah, thanks for those uh, asking those questions. Uh, yeah.